Vascular occlusion. Ah! <laughs> Dealing with a medical emergency can make anyone feel that way. However, you need to have the knowledge, skill, and judgment to make sure that you approach this in a calm, cool, and collected manner. Today, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to give you my tips on how to approach a vascular occlusion with hyaluronidase. And I'm also going to give you all the rationales for it. Let's get into it. First, let's understand what hyaluronidase is. It's a protein enzyme that's designed to break down hyaluronic acid. In fact, our body creates our own hyaluronic acid and our own hyaluronidase that's constantly replenishing itself. Now, because we've created synthetic fillers of hyaluronic acid, we've been able to create a synthetic hyaluronidase to break it down if necessary. Now, just like any medication, there are slight risks and side effects, including the rare case of an allergic reaction. However, because we are dealing with a medical emergency, we are not going to do a patch test with this medication because the benefits outweigh the risk. All right, so what do we notice here? We notice these large arteries that connect to different arteries in the face, right? And on top of that, we notice that these larger arteries have these very small branching arteries that are called arterioles, and they perfuse oxygenated rich blood to the surface of the skin. So we have a bunch of blood that's carried throughout the body, but we have these little branches. This is what's really important because, let's say in this case, the largest branch, which is the facial artery here, ends up getting blocked off with filler, then now this whole area is getting a lack of oxygenated rich blood. There is still some that's perfusing, however, and they perfuse through these little arterioles over here. Now, this blockage of blood that's supposed to be rushing this way has to go somewhere. So it compensates and now it kind of like pushes its way through these, injuring these microvessels. And these microvessels are trying to figure out what to do with the blood. And as a result, two things happen. You've got ischemia, which is the white blanching that initially happens whenever this area no longer gets oxygenated rich blood. And then it's followed by the purple little lacy hue that happens as a result from the injury of these little arterioles. These arterioles are spasming and they're causing this mini little bruise-like pattern all throughout the area. And this is what's known as levito reticularis. And this is a big signal to us to saying, hey, by the way, not only do we have ischemia, but we're also starting to really die out the tissue here and sooner or later that can lead to necrosis or basically death of that tissue permanently. So we need to act accordingly. It's less than one in a hundred thousand chances where you actually place the tip of the needle in the artery and occlude it. Now if you're going to place that needle back into that artery on purpose, it's less than one in a million and it's harder than it looks even if you had an ultrasound. So the theory is right now, no. You definitely wanna place the product surrounding the artery and the hyaluronidase will eventually diffuse into the blood vessels breaking apart the filler. Not all clinicians agree that hyaluronidase works as simplistically as I just talked about. And the reason why is because there are a lot of providers who have had this issue and they flooded the area with hyaluronidase and it didn't work. It took them multiple rounds and even follow-up sessions in order to fully occlude that area. Whereas if it would just work simply as flooding the area and it'll just integrate into the arteries, it should work. There could be multiple reasons for that, such as the type of filler. Some are thicker, some are stickier, some have more cross-linking than others. There's multiple reasons that we don't really know. But regardless, the answer still to make it simple for you is to flood the area with the right amount of product and then follow up accordingly. And we'll get into that later on. Let's look at the facial artery here. This facial artery runs deep right up until this mandibular bone. There's a little notch here. You can feel it. It's right in front of your master. Feel that little dip here? That's the facial artery that was bounded so hard onto that bone and so deep that it's created that indentation. That tells us that I know where the facial artery is. Also, I know that it runs deep there. So if I want to cannulate that facial artery here, and then if I end up having a drawback, I can connect a syringe and flush hyaluronidase into that facial artery, which ends up connecting to 
most of the areas, including the nose, including the lip. So it's an option for all providers out there if they're not really getting anywhere by flooding this area with hyaluronidase. This is still the go-to, but this is another option that you can use if you're having a hard time dissolving the product. Each area should be flooded with about 500 units of hyaluronidase. Now, if you look closely, you can see it's also affecting her nose and it's starting to affect her forehead. This is actually a second and third area. If you see that, that means this is going to be another 500 and this will be another 500. And I would approach these areas in three different injection patterns. I would make sure that this area was flooded, this was flooded, and this was flooded using three different techniques and in a total of 1,500 units. Should you just be flooding the entire area? Not always, and I'll tell you why. I don't place more than 1,500 units in one setting. And the reason why is because I need to make sure that I have enough product to use afterwards. The half-life of hyaluronidase is about 45 minutes. So in that case, I know that I can go back in about 45 minutes to an hour, have them do warm compresses, do other things as well, and then I can reassess. If I think that there's still an occlusion, then I can go ahead and redo the same thing over again. Where if I just flood the area with everything that I've got and it doesn't work, which seems to happen once in a while, then I'm stuck. I don't have anything else to use. So this is a clear systematic order that works really well and it gives me the confidence to have enough product Product to follow up if necessary. Now the other reason why I don't love flooding the face with hyaluronidase is because whenever you're placing that much hyaluronidase into the face, it likely does have a side effect of dissolving some of your own natural hyaluronic acid. It's not designed to do that, but time and time again, we do hear these stories of clients stating that. If that ever happens, it usually does replenish itself by two to three weeks. I don't like using a needle whenever it comes to dissolving the area. And the reason why is because needles pierce through veins and arteries on the face. I am dealing with the levito reticularis, which kind of looks like a bruise. It's not quite the same thing, but if I go in with a needle and I slice through all these veins and arteries here with a bunch of hyaluronidase, I won't be able to tell if this is dissolved or not because I'm going to have to deal with all that bruising and I won't be able to tell the difference. So preferably what I use is a can I use a 22 gauge or 25 gauge cannula and I basically place the product pretty superficially. When I say that, it's going to be in the subcutaneous layer. It doesn't need to go deeper in my opinion and the reason why is because most of the occlusions tend to be in the dermal fat junction, which means that it's in between the fat and the skin layer. It's pretty rare that it's deeper than that. Anything's possible, especially if you're placing on the bone and you've included something there. However, most of the time, the occlusion is going to be found in that region. And remember, hyaluronidase does tend to disperse throughout the tissues, so it does a pretty good job of dissolving everything if you're placing it in the subcutaneous tissue. So a 22 or 25 gauge cannula, place it superficially, reassess. If for some reason you're not getting anywhere with that, then you can go ahead and place it deeper later on. Now, after three rounds or three sessions of hyaluronidase, Days, I will send them home and have them follow up the next day. Remember, if you have the option of using an ultrasound, you should be placing it there to see if there's adequate blood flow. That could save you from placing more dissolver for no reason. So here in Canada, our hyaluronidase is prepped by our pharmacists and they do a mixture of 150 units per mil and they usually come in a 10 mil vial. So if I have about four mils, that gives me just over 500 units, which is kind of perfect for me because I want give or take 500, right? A little more is better than a little less. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to add another mil of lidocaine and I want to do that without epinephrine. And the reason why is because lidocaine is a vasodilator. I want to flood this area and have all these little arterioles and arteries open up and that lidocaine will help do that. Don't mix it with epinephrine because the epinephrine will actually constrict the blood vessels. I want pure lidocaine, one or 2% is fine, and I'm going to make that perfect mixture of five mils total, and I'm just going to flood the area. Be mindful, it does burn. The lidocaine can help a little bit, now, if you really want to help to minimize the burning, you can add a little bit of sodium bicarbonate to that to neutralize the acidity.
Anytime you're dealing with a VO, hyaluronidase is always going to be your go-to, and I recommend storing enough of them in your facility. I recommend always having six available just in case of repeat treatments. Not only that, in your crash card, you should consider other things to focus on vasodilation and blood thinners. Remember, these are medications sometimes, so you have to make sure that you're going through the checklist with your patient, but these things could include such as a gentle massage with warm compresses, baby aspirin, you can look at nitro paste, you can look at something called CO2 lift mask, which is a topical form of hyperbaric oxygen chamber therapy. These are all things that are a good idea to have in your arsenal. But remember, hyaluronidase, proper use and knowledge, skill, and judgments of its use are what's going to save you. That's it for me, guys. If you're serious about medical aesthetics and you want to take your game to the next level, consider joining my Patreon where I update you at least weekly on live injections. Until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Cheers!